Good morning, India. It's 8 a.m. by the clock. That means the next two hours we'll be bringing you all the news you need to kickstart your day. I'm Sonal Mehrotra Kapoor, and two focus points on the show today. One, the rising number of cases, which is a huge matter of concerns. Beds are actually running out in several hospitals in Maharashtra. And second, the all exciting battle for West Bengal and Nandi Gram to be staying in focus now. Tomorrow, in fact, day after, is when both the second phase in Assam and West Bengal will start. And Mamta Banerjee is on wheels. What is happening? We'll bring you all the latest. First up, the headlines. In nine states, COVID cases have more than doubled in just one week. This is the steepest rise in weekly active cases since July. The positivity rate, that is the percentage of people testing positive, is sharply rising. Mumbai, Bengaluru, Delhi are running out of COVID beds. It's blockbuster battle of Nandi Gram in Bengal. Mamta Banerjee's roadshow versus Amit Shah's. We'll see what happens there. Last day of campaigning for the second phase, also in Assam, where Prime Minister Rahul Gandhi, Priyanka Gandhi are on the campaign trail. Manipur government says no camps for Myanmar refugees. Civil society groups cannot open camps, politely turn away the Myanmar refugees. WHO in its latest study says that Let's begin with the COVID numbers. Uh, now let's bring out a breakup of how rapidly the cases are actually rising. And it's not in one or two states. It's not Maharashtra alone, but 16 big states. And look at this graphic on your screen right now, which looks at nine states where cases have more than doubled in just one week. In seven days, cases have more than doubled. These are states like UP, Andhra Pradesh, top of the list over there at about 6,000, 5,000 cases each. This rate of growth could overwhelm health services very quickly. Chhattisgarh doubled at almost 16,000 cases. Delhi uh, saw almost 10,000 cases over there. Now, the second one, the graphic that we'll show you next actually has eight states where the pressure is rapidly building up on the health systems. We are seeing this, of course, in Maharashtra, where almost a quarter of a million new cases have been added. What's particularly worrying is that these states, including the pole-bound Tamil Nadu, are seeing cases rise at a rapid pace. The other pole-bound states, like Kerala, is the only one where the rate of growth is in single digits. But a few days ago, they were actually negative, so they're back up as well. And of course, in the middle of all of this, the one real matter of concern, one state which nobody really knows why has seen a constant COVID spike is the state of Maharashtra. Let's talk about BMC first, which has released orders and guidelines for hospitals and nursing homes. All facilities should activate their maximum beds. Assistant Commissioner in charge of every ward may deploy a required police personnel as well. Teachers and any other staff in the selected nursing home and local hospitals. So they're really bringing out people to try and man those hospitals and bring out as much of help as possible. Hospital beds, ICU beds at the ward level in nursing homes, local hospitals uh, are seeing exhaustion and that's the reason a lot of these facilities have now been pushed up, amped up. No admission shall be done directly without admission of the ward, uh, ward room and no asymptomatic COVID positive patient without any comorbidity to be allotted the beds as well. So that's how desperate the situation is. 80% of the COVID beds and 100% of the ICU beds at this point at private hospitals shall be kept reserved for the ward, war room allotment, COVID patients only. So this is happening at a time when Mumbai also seeing a massive spike in cases. And the chief minister, remember, just a few days ago had said that because people are not following COVID, COVID protocols, they just might be a lockdown back very soon. Let's look at the numbers there. Now, Maharashtra in total, 31,643 new cases, 102 deaths in just the past 24 hours. Mumbai alone, almost 6,000 new cases and 12 lives lost in just one day. 
Now, with the numbers soaring through the roof in several states, the availability of beds in Maharashtra, particularly Mumbai, is a huge concern. At the moment, there are only 131 ventilator beds available for public uh, in the public hospitals and about 95 in private. My colleague on the ground found out more. Himangi Rani stays in Mumbai's Mulund area. Last evening, her husband was diagnosed with COVID and she struggled to find a bed at private hospital in Mumbai. I am struggling to find a COVID bed for him in a COVID dedicated hospital. But I have not found a single bed for my husband. And she is not alone. With Mumbai recording 30,000 cases over the weekend, soon the city will face a complete shortage of beds. To do the math, Every day about 6,000 to 7,000 cases are coming up in the city and with nearly 10 to 15 percent of patients requiring hospitalization, it's clear that about 600 to 700 additional patients need a COVID bed every day at this rate. As per the data from the BMC, out of a total 16,247 beds across all categories, 12,008 have been occupied, leaving 26 percent or 4,239 beds free. Of ICU beds, 1,709 is the capacity, 1,261 are occupied, 448 are available. Of 8,694 beds with oxygen, 6,520 are occupied, leaving 2,174 available. But significantly, of 1,036 ventilator beds, as many as 810 are occupied, leaving just 226 presently available. Of this, 131 are available in public hospitals, but just 95 in private hospitals. The Mumbai municipality expects to touch 10,000 cases every day in coming days, and given the growth rate of the virus, there is a plan to increase the total number of beds to 21,000 in the next 10 to 15 days. There are no ICU beds available in many of the cities, and the situation is getting worse. In Dhuwe, Jaga, like small city, smaller cities also, the, there are oxygen beds are less and the oxygen is not available in proper quantity. The, 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 there are so many hospitals where the patients have died because of lack of oxygen. The situation is really getting worse. If this continues, then uh, the next month or the next week will be really crucial. Looking at the grim situation and the number of cases going up continuously, the Maharashtra government is now preparing for a lockdown. The state government is also giving emphasis on institutional quarantine over home isolation and for that number of beds and oxygen supply needs to be ramped up to keep the death rate under control. In Mumbai with camera person Rajendra Dhyalkar, this is Purva Chitnus for NDTV. And it's not just Mumbai or Maharashtra. Bengaluru is seeing the maximum number of cases in Karnataka state that has been hit by a second wave of COVID-19. Now Sunday night's data showed that over 2,000 fresh cases have come up in the capital city. Government hospitals across Bengaluru are once again getting to grips with rising COVID-19 numbers. All 108 beds reserved for COVID patients in this hospital are full. More beds will be added as needed. In the March and the late March now, we are seeing there is an increased number of COVID positive patients coming for treatment in our hospital. Totally we have reserved 108 beds for COVID patients. Cases are going to increase. We are going to further increase the number of these beds. Just a week ago, the Jainagar General Hospital, a government hospital in South Bengaluru, had set aside 50 beds with oxygen for COVID patients as the second wave began to hit the city. Now that number has doubled to 100 beds with 85 to 90 occupied. Karnataka also is seeing a steep uh, surge. We were only 300 numbers in March 1st, 2nd, 3rd. But at the end of the March, we are seeing almost 3,000 cases in the state. We need to uh, upscale all our uh, precautionary measures. The question on the minds of many, will this surge in numbers lead to a lockdown or curfew? Today, as our Honorable uh, Prime Minister has yesterday said, Janata curfew is the only way forward. We need to learn to live with the virus. Coexistence with this pandemic is the order of the day. So the stress is on the public needing to follow COVID protocols. But a whopping 10 crores in fines collected over the last year 
by the city corporation, the BBMP, is also actually an indication that mask wearing is not yet a universal habit. With Govind, Maya Sharma in Bengaluru for NDTV. All right, away from COVID, let's shift our focus to the battleground states now. And phase two is going to be very exciting. Both West Bengal and Assam will be voting in phase two. And the big guns are blazing in Nandigram, the constituency that has become the centerpiece of Bengal Assembly elections. Nandigram votes the 1st of April. And today it starts uh, with Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee hitting the campaign trail, but on a wheelchair. She's been on village bumpy roads, a meeting with people, greeting them as well. Anurag Dwari was there and he brought us this report. Remember, today is also the day when there will be a clash of titans. There will be a roadshow by Amit Shah and also Mamta Banerjee. All happening at the same time, all happening at Nandigram. An election campaign like no other. The star candidate on a wheelchair. Nandigram has never seen anything like this, nor has anyone else really in Bengal or elsewhere. Mamta Banerjee going down bumpy village roads, wooing voters and taking on her rival Shubendu Adhikari head on, accusing him of communal politics. At his village meetings deep inside Nandigram, Adhikari making no bones about his main plank against Mamta Banerjee. The charge of minority appeasement. Words like Pakistan, Begum, Pepper, his speech. At least 30% of Nandigram's population is Muslim. Divisions are getting sharper. Kabi bhi mera jindagi mein kabi nahi dekha. Itna aisa jo chief minister India mein nahi rana chahiye. Kya aisa kya hua aapko? Aise kya dikkat aayi aapko? Kya ushubida hua? Kya jo jhoota baaz? O koi baat sach baat nahi unka. Mo mein jo baat aata hai sab jhoota baat. To Mamta ji di bhalo. Bhalo to baat hai. Hazaar bhalo, lakhko bhalo. Aur mato aato nishtat ther bhalo. Tomorrow is the last day of campaigning at Nandigram, sure to be high decibel and high voltage. Nandigram has become the centerpiece of the Bengal Assembly elections. 1st April, the vote here will go down in history. At Nandigram with Anurag Dwari, Mandipa Banerjee. NDTV. Also talking about Nanti Gram, let's give you a bit of a background here. Now, the silence of a graveyard has engulfed Nanti Gram in Singur in the last decade at least, before the campaign actually became the epicenter of where Mamta Banerjee would be contesting from. And these are the words of West Bengal's former Communist Party chief, Budhadev Bhattacharya. On the eve of the second phase of polls, he pointed out that Trinamool's movement at Nanti Gram and Singur 14 to 15 years ago against the forcible acquisition of the land of factories of, that had costed Budhadev Bhattacharya his job in 2011 and the CPM, its 34-year-old government. Nandi Gram is voting in the second phase on, uh, for, on 1st of April and Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee is logged in with a battle with her own former colleague and now BJP's poster boy, Shuvindu Adhikari. Now referring to the Trinamool Congress and its face-off with the left front government over Singhur and Nandi Gram in 2000, 2008 and 2007, uh, Cunning drama by conspirators is what uh, Mr. Bhattacharji said, saying that these conspirators are now divided and slinging mud at each other and the youth of Bengal who lost 
the opportunity of jobs are paying the price. The communist leader has also condemned communal politics of both BJP and Trinamool and ruled that uh, communal harmony in the state that was the pride of Bengal has been poisoned. All right, with that, we're going to slip into a break. On the other side, what's happening with the refugees and how is uh, India treating them? All this happening at the Myanmar border. That's coming up next. Welcome back. Let's talk about Maharashtra, but uh, an, another context at this point. A mob of sword-wielding Sikhs on Monday attacked policemen, injuring at least four of them after being refused to hold religious procession in the area. Now, all this uh, was happening in midst of a coronavirus pandemic, of course, and just look at those videos. That viral video of the incident showed how mobs storming the Gurudwara, breaking barricades and attacking policemen. What exactly was the trigger? Well, we are told at this point that once the police intervened and said that because of the pandemic, the religious um, movement there or practices could not be held, that's what got uh, the Sikhs extremely upset. We've got the reaction for you coming in from the SP of the area. Listen in. Uh, इसी चीज को देखते हुए हल्ला बोल की परमिशन जो है प्रशासन ने रद्द की थी प्रशासन रिजेक्ट किया गया था और इसमें गुरुद्वारा बोर्ड के सदस्य गुरुद्वारा के जो पुजारी है मुख्य पुजारी जी बाबा जी इनके साथ हमारी बातचीत हुई थी मीटिंग्स हुई थी और उन्होंने काफी सरकार किया था ये तय किया था कि कोरोना की हालत देखते हुए इस बार हल्ला बोल कैंसिल करेंगे पारंपरिक रूप पे न आते हुए गुरुद्वारा के अंदर ही अंदर मनाएंगे तो 4 बजे के करीब ये शुरू होता है लेकिन कुछ यंगस्टर लड़के जो है वो बात नहीं मान रहे थे बाबा जी ने भी उनको समझाने की कोशिश की तो वो एक नंबर गेट से बाहर आ गए और ट्रेडिशनल रूट जो है इसी रूट पे उन्होंने हल्ला बोल मनाया इसमें हमारे रिस्टिक करते वक्त कुछ चार कर्मचारी जख्मी हुए और पुलिस के कुछ व्हीकल से उनका नुकसान हुआ Let's talk about uh, battleground Kerala now, where the stakes are high for the Congress party, especially for the Gandhi, since Rahul Gandhi is now an MP from that state. But it's survival for several other leaders of the party as well as Sneha explores. Opposition leader Ramesh Chanitala calls it a do-or-die battle for the Congress in Kerala. The stakes are high not just because Congress is not in power anywhere in the South, but because this is the first assembly elections after Rahul Gandhi became an MP from the state. This is a do-and-die battle for the Congress party in Kerala and it's a test for the Congress in the national level also. Given the electoral history of Kerala and the revolving door policy, UDF should find itself in the seat of power in 2021. However, this task is an uphill climb even now, with certain contradictions before the Congress, common ground with a political opponent in Kerala and a friend in one state becoming a foe in another. Like the BJP, the Congress has also promised to protect Shabrimala traditions of not allowing entry to menstruating women into the temple despite an earlier Supreme Court order or the matter being sub judice in what could be seen as majority appeasement. We will come with that. We will pass a resolution to protect the faith and belief of the people in Shabrimala. Close and close of devotees are coming in the Shabrimala. There is no gender inequality there. It gets curiouser that Sitaram Yachiri and the left, that is the foe in Kerala, is a friend in Bengal. So how do you sharply criticize the left in the southern state while standing with them in the east? They win the elections in Karnataka, but today there is a BJP government. How? They win the elections in Madhya Pradesh, today there is a BJP government. Why? These are issues that the Congress will have to answer. No, I mean, what can Between I... Between ally and enemies, you know, two parties, so... No, no, we, I mean, we are allying because they agree with an objective. Our objective is clear. We have to protect this constitution. We have to save India from imploding. 
for petty electoral gains, they are trying to resurrect controversies where none exist. Till that verdict or judgment comes, I mean, there's nothing that anybody can say or do. And, and, and this is only out of their frustration of saying that they do not have any alternative approach, any alternative plan from what the LDF is suggesting for the future of Kerala, for the future of its people, and for the defense of India and its constitution. The dilemmas are many, but it is a question of political survival. So Chenitala is campaigning at a hectic pace like never before. Rahul Gandhi has made around three trips to the state in the last one month and Priyanka Gandhi will campaign from Tuesday, giving the Kerala battle all they have got. With camera person SP Babu, Sneha Koshri for NDTV. And uh, let's focus on Tamil Nadu now, where DMK leader A. Raja apologised for his remarks against Tamil Nadu Chief Minister EPS and his mother after the CM choked up. Speaking about it, it has now become about who gets public sympathy and Raja obviously apologising. Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Edapadi Parini Swami's emotional appeal to voters to punish those who had allegedly insulted his mother and, by extension, all mothers and women, forced DMK MP A. Raja to apologize, though he insisted he had been misunderstood. The damage control exercise comes as the DMK saw the AIA DMK use Raja's comments to add to propaganda that the former is anti-women. Only last week, DMK campaign secretary Dindigal Leone had made sexist remarks on women for which Kanimuri apologized. In Tamil Nadu, women voters outnumber men. The AIA DMK under Jayalalitha is believed to have got more than 50% of women votes in 2016, given the multiple women-oriented schemes that she launched. Now, all political parties have tailor-made their manifestos to actively woo women. Controversial statement about the CM should be avoided. All of us women are appalled at the sexist remarks by politicians during the campaigning. It's very shameful and I would, I would definitely think three times about voting the DMK. Raja could well be the Manishankar Iyer of the DMK with his comments on EPS that could be likened to the Chaiwala comment that the BJP used politically in 2014. The DMK has realized that their image has taken a beating in the public perception, but hope that it won't spoil their chances to form the government after 10 years. With Sam Daniel in Chennai, Uma Sudhir, NDTV. And let's uh, talk about what's been happening uh, in the other states as well. Uh, let's talk about pole-bound Assam, where today it is the last day of campaigning for the second phase. 1st of April is when 39 seats will go to polls. Now, both the BJP and the Congress used Holi on Monday to reach out to the supporters, though they said nothing political about it. But can there be any better way to connect in this political season? Take a look. In a colourful mood on Holi, Assam Chief Minister Sarvananda Sonwal at the largest wholesale market in the northeast, Fancy Bazaar in Guwahati. But politics or not, with just three days to go for the second phase polls, in 39 crucial seats in central Assam and in the Bengali heartland of Barag Valley, this is certainly a good connect with the people. In 2016, the BJP had done extremely well here. But this time, the Congress's Mahajot is playing challenger. In fact, there you can see AICC General Secretary in charge of Assam, Jitender Singh, playing Holi. He has been applied Holi Tika by party supporters in Silchar. The battle for Barak Valley is an intense political battle between the Congress and the BJP. Because last time, in 2016, in the Barak Valley region, out of the 15 seats, BJP had won 8 of them. 
while Congress could manage only two seats and its ally, AIUDF, had won five seats. But this time around, the battle for Barak Valley is very intense because with the alliance of the Congress and the AIUDF, there is a situation which might lead to polarization of the votes. We've come to the temple, we've prayed for the future of Assam, for the people of Assam, for their good health uh, and prosperity. Uh, and of course, our commitment towards the five guarantees. In Silchar, the BJP seems to have used Holi for a show of strength. All seems set for the second phase of polls in Assam on 1st of April. With Manish Kumar in Guwahati and camera person Sanjay Chakravarti in Silchar, Ratnadeep Chaudhary, Findy TV. So those are the headlines at 9. You're watching Good Morning India. I'm Sonal Merotra Kapoor. Two stories on everybody's mind this Tuesday. One, of course, is the constant rise of COVID cases. We'll bring you a breakup of that. And then what's happening in Battleground West Bengal, where the Battle Royale is actually in Nandi Gram. So we'll keep our focus on both those stories. First up, let's look at the issue of COVID. We'll bring out a graphic for you now, which talks about 16 big states. And out of those 16 big states where rapidly the cases are rising, nine states where cases have more than doubled in just one week. In just seven days, the cases have doubled. UP, Andhra Pradesh, top of that list over there with 6,000, 5,000 cases each. This rate of growth could overwhelm health services very, very quickly. Chhattisgarh doubled to almost 16,000. Delhi saw almost 10,000. And let's look at the next graphic now which has about eight states marked on it, where pressure is rapidly building up on health systems. We are, of course, looking at Maharashtra, where almost a quarter of a million new cases have been added. What's particularly worrying here is that these states, including pole-bound Tamil Nadu, are seeing cases rise at a rapid pace. Pole-bound Kerala is the only one where the rate of growth is in single digits. But remember, Kerala was already negative, so it's back at increasing the positivity rate now. So we looked at all those states there which are an area of concern. The national capital also uh, area of concern and look at those figures over there. Delhi at about 1900 new cases on Monday and that is an area of concern as well. Active cases has gone up by around 8000. This is the first time in 2021. So as we look at these numbers really we look at holy celebration that happened as well. Let's get a word from Sunakshi on how exactly is this panning out on the ground. Sunakshi we know that Maharashtra more than 90%, 60% almost cases coming in from there, but Delhi on a constant rise as well. What is the situation in the hospitals here first up? Uh, well, that's right. Uh, you know, we know that uh, India saw over 68,000 fresh cases um, as of Monday, which was the biggest rise and a surge, you could say, since October. Now, uh, as far as the national capital is concerned, uh, we have been seeing a steady rise in the number of COVID cases in the national capital. Uh, just as of Monday, we saw over 1,900 fresh cases, uh, only indicating that the infection is uh, spreading in the national capital. Now, remember, the centre had uh, held a meeting with uh, the Union Health Secretary, I'm sorry, held a meeting with 12 states and the UTs just on Saturday, which was just before Holi, uh, to, to remind and discuss with them the seriousness and uh, how, how things could be on the ground really for everybody in the state, given that the cases are rising. Remember, Maharashtra continues to report the highest number of cases uh, and we also know that the health infrastructure in the state is grappling with the conditions over there. But in the national capital, we've also uh, reported and my colleague Akshay has also been reporting on the health infrastructure in the state uh, running low in terms of ICU beds. We've been running that story all of yesterday and today. Uh, so really on ground with just Holi being celebrated yesterday, relatively lesser in comparison to the traditional style of really celebrating Holi. But people had been out on the streets without masks, not following COVID appropriate behavior. This could only indicate that we could see more cases on ground and this could really affect uh, in terms of getting a bed in the hospital 
levels, given that the cases are on a steady rise in the national capital. All right, over there. So that's the situation in the national capital. Of course, the major area of concern at the moment is Maharashtra and also Karnataka. You've got Saurabh Gupta and Maya Sharma both joining us this morning for more on this. Good morning uh, to you guys. Saurabh, I have to come to you first regarding what exactly are the measures that the Mumbai Municipal, uh, the Bombay Municipal uh, Co uh, Corporation, the BMC, beg your pardon, is doing at this point. We've already heard from the Chief Minister saying a lockdown is now due as people are simply not following COVID protocol. Well, you know, there are a couple of things that the government is considering. One is, at this moment, there are beds available. There is no shortage of beds at this point. Okay. But if this trend continues, hmm. it won't take time for the bed shortage to ca come in. And tremendous stress on the health system is what the state health secretary has predicted. Hmm. How does the BMC plan to tackle that? How do municipalities plan to tackle that? Well, the first thing that the government is doing is asking hospitals to function at highest capacity one secondly they're asking people and hospitals mainly to actually you know uh, discharge patients who are asymptomatic and provide them pro uh, you know provide for home isolation for them so that when a patient who needs a bed who's actually symptomatic or who has actually a <clears throat> breathing issue that person can get medical attention in a hospital thirdly <clears throat> what they're also doing is you know, like in the first phase, towards the end of the first phase, when cases had spiked in Mumbai in the month of June, July, at that time, what the authorities had done was they had activated these ward level war rooms, which means that in every ward, there's a war room, a ward officer decides who goes to which hospital. <coughs> I beg your pardon. He has a list of beds and uh, based on that, he decides who gets to be hospitalized and who needs home isolation. Hmm. This is one. Now, what the government is considering as far as, you know, stopping the rise of cases is lockdown-like restrictions. And you've already seen a lot of voices have said that, you know, a lockdown again means a severe blow on the economy. People are clearly, uh, you know, not being able to uh, already recover from what they've suffered losses in the lockdown. So another lockdown will obviously mean disaster for them. So lockdown-like restrictions means what? Uh, that, you know, people continue to function but from home so uh, you'll see a lot from a lot of work from home uh, you know in uh, offices that have gone back to work people they'll have to be working from home again travel will be restricted only if you need to travel and those are the things that the government is considering at this point all right so government considering a lockdown like situation not exactly a lockdown but at least that word has been used for the first time since last year and cut to karnataka now and maya if the chief minister in maharashtra is talking about lockdown the chief minister in karnataka actually ruling it out altogether what more do we know the karnataka chief minister actually held a high level meeting yesterday evening and after that made it clear that they were not thinking of a lockdown now they were not thinking of a curfew now now this is despite the state seeing a significant spike in cases and the capital bengaluru seeing the bulk of those cases just in the last 24 hours there were 2700 over 2700 new cases added in the state of which more than 1700 were from bengaluru alone but there is no talk of lockdown, no talk of curfew. The chief minister also said that schools and colleges would stay open and that exams would in fact be held in another 15 days time. But he also said that protests and rallies would not be permitted in the next 15 days. That restriction is there to try and stop people from gathering as well. The state government does, however, describe the spike in cases as alarming. They've used the term alarming for the spike in cases. So the state government does know the situation is not really that great when it comes to the second wave hitting the city. And the hospitals, though, the state government insists that there are enough hospital beds. Uh, we had figures from two government hospitals also who are almost full. The beds set aside for COVID, they've increased the number of beds and those beds are almost full. But the government does say there are enough hospital beds. There's no need for panic on that front. And that they have learned from last year when it comes to admissions, when it comes to actually getting people the treatment that they need. The city of Bengaluru mm. also will soon have three COVID care centers. 
Now, these for people who are asymptomatic, who are not seriously ill, who don't need hospitalization, but who do need to be isolated. So Bengaluru gearing up for the second wave that has reached the city. The numbers described as alarming by the state government. Alarming indeed. Uh, several states now, like we mapped out about 18 states, which are seeing uh, that uptick now. Uh, both Saurabh and Maya, thanks so much for joining us with the very latest. Let's take it forward with our doctors now. We've got Dr. Giridhar R. Babu. Uh, he's actually a professor at the and head of the life course epidemiology at uh, PHFI Bengaluru. Joining us from there, Dr. Rahul Pandit, there, member of the Maharashtra COVID Task Force, Director of Critical Care at Fos uh, Fortis Hospitals over oh, there. Uh, Dr. Pandit, let me come to you first. Uh, could you give our viewers a sense of how real the situation is at this point? We heard the Chief Minister raise the alarm saying a lockdown is going to come. Or like um, um, our, my colleague was reporting, a lockdown-like situation is going to fall upon people. What currently is the state of the hospitals? So Maharashtra is currently going through a very uh, difficult phase in terms of the number of cases coming positive every day. Hmm. Almost 8 to 10 percent rise in the cases every day is what we are seeing in Maharashtra. Already Mumbai and Maharashtra have got uh, the night curfew, uh, which is going on since last couple of days, hmm. where from uh, 8 p.m. to morning 6 a.m. the traffic has been already restricted and people gatherings have already been restricted. There were heavy uh, uh, restrictions on the festive seasons as well. Coming to the helped? hospital, obviously, well, I, I don't know whether the festive season uh, curbs helped or not, but the night curfew certainly has been, at least for the last two days, it has been a holiday. <laughs> So we have seen very few people on the road, but you have to see it tonight to see actually the difference, what it makes. Okay. Because today is a working day. Right. Uh, but coming to the actual number of cases being positive, see the good thing is the silver lining about this is that there are most patients who are actually asymptomatic. Mm. But with the sheer number of cases coming positive, mm. even if we say that only 15% to 18% are going to need the admissions, you are still looking at a very large number of patients. And that's where the health infrastructure needs to be challenged, is going to be challenged. Uh, in Mumbai, we still have uh, enough beds to look after patients. Uh, there are almost 30% beds vacant still in the hospitals. And that's not the case in the private hospitals. So that's in the public hospitals and the jumbo care center. Most of the private hospitals in Mumbai have filled to the brim. Even the intensive care unit beds are hardly available in the private hospitals. Mm. But the government of uh, Maharashtra and the Mumbai Municipal Commissioner have, uh, have uh, basically recruited out new beds. Mm. Today, we have got nursing homes which were which are smaller nursing homes up to 50 beds even their uh, beds have been uh, requested to be taken up for covid care so we will be adding around 2000 mm -hmm. odd beds in private sector today mm -hmm. which would have around 400 icu beds as well mm -hmm. so right. if you ask Dr. me Pandit, what is the can i ask you this then that in order to deal with this magnitude of problem a lot of people have been asking for vaccine for all a lot of parties now saying, especially in states where a massive escalation is taking place, just open a vaccine for all. Do you think that's going to help? Of course, I think the, the, both the processes need to be parallelly run. We have always advocated a vaccine for all because what we ultimately want is that people should be protected with some form of an antibody. Hmm. So there are a group of people who have had disease and who are probably having some protection. Hmm. And now we want these people to be vaccinated as quickly as possible. It is actually the age group between 18 and 45 or 50 who are actually venturing out of the house and who are highly likely to be contagious That's and spreading the infection to the older population. Mm. So we are actually not vaccinating that group at all. We are vaccinating mm. the other half where obviously they are the vulnerable group and they carry the high risk of mortality. Mm. But to break the chain, we need to vaccinate the other group of population, which is not happening the currently. Younger is on the local trains, the younger lot is stepping out for work and they are perhaps, that's how the spread is actually happening and that's where you're right, we need to break the chain. So let's see if the government is really listening on this one. Let me get in a word uh, from Professor Babu over there as well. Uh, Professor, nobody really, and I say this after having debated this for quite some time now, nobody in the country is being able to put a finger on the reason why the sudden spike has taken place as well. Right. A lot of talk has happened about a double mutation, a new strain uh, that is harder to fight, uh, the UK strain, the Brazilian strain that is being seen across the country as well. If that is so, then what should be India's strategy right now? Yeah, uh, thanks for having me on this show, Son. Uh, in my sense, there are three important factors which have led to building of susceptible pool. So whenever there's a large cohort of people who are uninfected, then the number of cases are definitely going to rise. And those three factors are one, changing virus. 
the strain itself is uh, probably more infectious but we do not have the evidence yet and the evidence which is required is both in vitro and by establishing contact tracing whether this strain is causing more infections than the other the second thing is in terms of the host our own systems in terms of uh, combating with the virus whether it is reinfection or it is just that majority of the people are not following the covid appropriate behavior and this is a constant thing in all states not just in few states mm. finally the environment you see this now is the marriage season all fairs going on and there is mm -hmm. political rallies we are creating a conducive environment which will spread the virus much faster so as a net result you will see that these three factors have led to susceptible pools in almost every state some states are reporting early some are late but whichever but state is maharashtra I, yeah so the maharashtra if you see in terms of uh, the entire uh, pandemic uh, how it spread out it started with kerala then maharashtra and to the other states in the last year also the same pattern has occurred this uh, this time also around the That's second true. wave That's but true. in terms of the other states whether they are picking up the transmission early enough or not hmm. depends on what kind of testing strategy they have Mm. especially if they are uh, detecting the clusters earlier enough or not mm. if they are uh, failing to detect that it will actually lead to much more casualties later i, I think i should compliment both kerala and maharashtra for uh, putting up the fight really well right we all join you in that actually so kudos to all people like dr pandit on the program today thanks so much for joining us and to professor babu also for putting it in perspective actually for us we're going to slip into a break when we come back the second story on everybody's mind phase 2 of elections but all eyes on nandi gram where there is going to be a clash of titans today we'll bring you the details on the other side All right so we're all getting up for the second phase of elections in at least two of the states that's West Bengal and Assam but it is quite a day an action packed day of several rallies so let me quickly take you through who are the big speakers in big states all right we'll begin with Kerala where Prime Minister Modi is going to attend a meeting in Palakkad ahead of the polls and Priyanka Gandhi is also going to be meeting this is her first trip to the state remember congress has high stakes in that state so you see those preparation shots over there also When it comes to Bengal, however, it is clash of the titans. It is battle royal at the moment, and Amit Shah's roadshow will clash with Mamata Banerjee's as well. His roadshow is going to happen in Dibra, and uh, Prime Minister Modi, meanwhile, will be in Puducherry. So there, in fact, let's go back to Bengal, like you were looking at, and. and uh, mamta banerjee is going to be there as well now prime minister modi is going to be in puducherry in assam bjp's double engine model versus congress's uh, five guarantee pledge rahul gandhi is going to be there along with the bjp chief nadda who's also in assam the bjp chief will be in buri over there and later on in other parts of assam as well in tamil nadu prime minister modi will also be going he is uh, hopping between those two states uh, over there and then it is all eyes on one battle which is the mother of all battles which is battle royale and we are talking about nandi gram it is the last day of campaigning there and tensions are running high already mamta banerjee has accused shubhendu adhikari of engineering a uh, the injury to her leg speaking at one of the multiple rallies in nandi gram era mamta uh, banerjee said that the people of nandi gram did not attack her she said it was shubhendu adhikari's hired goons who did instead उत्तर प्रदेश गुंडा के बिहार गुंडा के सीपीएम गुंडा के भाव भय देखा भोट लुटबो एक भोट लुटे देखो तुम तर तुम की अवस्था है एक भोट लुटे देखो 
আর নন্দীগ্রামের মানুষকে আমি একটা কথা বলে যাই আপনারা কি ভয়ে গুটিয়ে যাচ্ছেন আমি তো নন্দীগ্রামের মানুষের কাছে এটা আশা করি না নন্দীগ্রামের ভাই বোনদের কাছে আমি এটা আশা করি না আমি জানি নন্দীগ্রাম জ্বলে ওঠে আওয়াজ তো দিয়ে দিলাম আর কি আওয়াজ আমি শান্তিতে ভোট চাই আমি গণতান্ত্রিক ভাবে ভোট চাই আমি ফ্রি অ্যান্ড ফেয়ার ইলেকশন চাই এরা ইলেকশন বন্ধ করার জন্য দাঙ্গা করতে চাই All right, and more of those speeches will be heard today as Mamta Banerjee is going to be wheeled across Santigram. She, in fact, has made it her base and she's only going to be campaigning there. Along with that, there will be a roadshow by Amit Shah as well. So it's going to be Didi on wheels versus Amit Shah in that all-crucial battle for Nantigram. All right, let's get a live update from Nantigram now. Monitipa Banerjee joins us now. Moniti, the day has come. The battle for Nantigram out at play completely. This is going to be the most anticipated seat for West Bengal. You know, that's everybody knows that by now. How exactly is the last day getting up? Well, uh, certainly Nantigram on edge. Nantigram tense. Nantigram excited certainly about the big election day that is one day away from now uh, but Nandigram sadly also quite tense you heard the chief minister uh, clearly very very agitated blaming Shubandu Adhikari for the injury that has slowed her down on a wheelchair uh, this entire election. Uh, she also has warned that uh, the BJP and Shubendu Adhikari may try and disrupt the polls uh, with you know, violence and hired gundas. So these are putting Nandigram on a different plane altogether of tension. Uh, the BJP also hugely active. Uh, Shubendu Adhikari, wherever he has been going, has uh, you know, been uh, raising the polarization and the communal issue, addressing Mamta Banerjee as Begum, talking about Pakistan. It's really a bit unnerving, uh, you know, to go into Nandigram and hear ordinary people speak in these terms. So the temperatures uh, politically and also on the polarization front really rising in Nandigram. And today Amit Shah is there. And then, I don't know if you missed that one, Mithun Chakravarti is also going to land here at 4 o'clock in the evening for a road show for um, uh, Shubendu Adhikari and Mamta Banerjee is not letting things slide either. She is going to do a wheelchair padyatra like she did yesterday only it's going to be a little shorter it will be three kilometers long but from one of the most uh, you know worshipped places in Nandigram Bhanga Bedia that's where there is a memorial to all those people who died in the violence in Nandigram in 2007 Mamta Banerjee will be setting off from there. But I also found very fascinating, Monidipa, on how on all the stages that she's been sitting on, there's a massive tiger right in the background. So the pitch is really war. It's crying war there at the moment. But tell us what happened yesterday when apparently Shubhendra Adhikari was chased out by women brandishing sticks at him. That's right. Uh, you know, uh, we were with him and the lanes into the village were so narrow. We were just waiting outside for him to finish his street corner meeting and then come back. And then we saw a tempo full of, uh, you know, Trinamool supporters drive into the same area. And that really had our antenna up saying, why is the Trinamool going into the same area that the BJP candidate is campaigning? And sure enough, uh, you know, soon after we saw this, uh, you know, uh, explosion of vehicles rushing out of that particular lane mm. and that's because apparently the women folk mostly of the minority community uh, chased uh, Shubhendu Adhikari and his convoy and if you have the pictures you can see that they are actually this so the security personnel are actually running to get into their vehicles and get out of there women armed with just you know sticks with flags on it that's it I mean it was not like uh, you know a hugely violent situation mm. but it was certainly a bit shocking shocking to see women come out on the streets and chase, uh, give chase to Shubhendu and this is not the first time that this has happened in minority areas Shubhendu has had a resistance from women even uh, holding lattes in their hands. All right, so all eyes uh, at that uh, place today. We'll keep coming back to you as the day progresses. Mithun, Da, Amit Shah, Mamta Banerjee, Shubhendu Adhikari, the list is long. All roads really lead to that place today. We'll come to that on the other side of this very quick break.
Welcome back. Let's take a look at the markets now and how they are doing uh, this Tuesday morning. At the moment, it's trading in the green. Sensex up by around 525 points over there, trading at almost 49,500. So good news, but still not, uh, right up there at the 50,000 mark. Let's look at uh, what exactly is driving the market up at the moment. At the moment, we see top gainers coming in from uh, JSW Steel, Gale India and Grassum Industries as well. Look at that, JSW Steel up by 15 points over there, 33 for Grassum Industry. Let's see what else is uh, in the lead now at the moment. Britannia continues its surge up 78 points. Dr. Reddy is up as well, 93 points over there. UPL up by 12.15 uh, points as well. This is almost 2% over there. Top metal gainers, as always, they're driving the market up. JSW, we already talked about. Sale as well. Tata Steel up 25 points, up 3.38%. And that's not all. We have uh, NMDC and Nalco and also the Jindal Steel and Power up by almost 9.75%. All this uh, in good percentage rise as well, driving up the market really. We've also got figures for you on how uh, the dollar versus INR figure is doing at this point. But not just metal like we said, it's also the banking stocks that are really driving up the market and getting them in the green. HDFC Bank up by 20 points over here, 1.39%. Axis Bank as well up by 8 uh, points. Yes Bank also, well surprise over there up with the margin, with a slight margin of 0.15%, but that also is uh, about 1.07% of uh, in percentage figures. IDBI is uh, slightly up there, Indusind Bank about 9.3 points and uh, ICICI Bank also in the green trading up by almost 0.95% over here. The overall picture, let's take a look at that. Back at Sensex at about 9.36 this morning. Trendsex is in the green. The mood is good at the moment. And we are almost touching about uh, up by almost 600 points over there. Now to poll bound Assam, where today is the last day of campaigning for the second phase of polls. That's on the 1st of April. 39 seats will go to polls. Now both BJP and Congress used Holi on Monday to reach out to their supporters and voters. Though they say nothing political was really said at this point. But can there be a better point and a better time to connect in the poll season? Well, here's a report. In a colourful mood on Holi, Assam Chief Minister Sarvananda Sonwal at the largest wholesale market in the northeast, Fancy Bazaar in Guwahati. But politics or not, with just three days to go for the second phase polls, in 39 crucial seats in central Assam and in the Bengali heartland of Barag Valley, this is certainly a good connect with the people. In 2016, the BJP had done extremely well here. But this time, the Congress's Mahajot is playing challenger. In fact, there you can see AICC General Secretary in charge of Assam, Jitender Singh, playing Holi. He has been applied Holi Tika by party supporters in Silchar. The battle for Barak Valley is an intense political battle between the Congress and the BJP. Because last time, in 2016, in the Barak Valley region, out of the 15 seats, BJP had won 8 of them. While Congress could manage only 2 seats and its ally, AIUDF, had won 5 seats. But this time around, the battle for Barak Valley is very intense because with the alliance of the Congress and the AIUDF, there is a situation which might lead to polarization of the votes. We've come to the temple, we've prayed for the future of Assam, for the people of Assam, for their good health uh, and prosperity, uh, and of course, our commitment towards the five guarantees. 
In Silchar, the BJP seems to have used Holi for a show of strength. All seems set for the second phase of polls in Assam on 1st of April. With Manish Kumar in Guwahati and camera person Sanjay Chakravarti in Silchar, Ratnadeep Chaudhary, Findy TV. Bringing you uh, some reports just coming in, the controversial order by the Manipur Home Department, which had actually asked and said that any of the Myanmar nationals will politely be returned. The refugees shall not be provided with any water and even food camps that have been set up. Now, that letter by the department has been withdrawn, is what Delhi government, uh, is what NDTV Vegaparan is learning from sources at this point. That letter by the Manipur Home Department has been withdrawn after controversy erupted over a Home Department letter which stated that turn away any of the Myanmar nationals politely. The Manipur uh, government at this point has withdrawn that after a review. Uh, Neeta Sharma on the phone line with us with the very latest. Uh, Neeta, there was huge criticism on that letter. What exactly led to this withdrawal? Uh, Sonal, there was a huge backlash as you were also mentioning. Uh, that's why this order has been reviewed by the Manipur Home Department. Now, the claim uh, Manipur Home Department is making is that, you know, this order was misconstrued and interpreted differently. So now this is the basis on which they are saying that the order was reviewed and it has now been withdrawn. We have to remember, you know, many refugees were coming to India from the neighboring country after its military leaders opened fire on protesting civilians in nine regions in Myanmar. Uh, you know, interestingly, even India was also uh, worried about the international backlash Interestingly, Myanmar's ambassador to the United Nations also appealed to the Indian government and various state states, you know, which which are on the borders, uh, on Indian borders, which have shared borders with Myanmar, saying that India should continue to provide shelter to the refugees given the humanitarian crisis in this country, in his country rather, saying that the two countries have a long history. Let's not forget that. So after, you know, uh, somewhat international pressure also, and also domestically also India reviewed its uh, stance on on this issue and now the order has been reviewed, we are being told. Sonal? All right. Uh, thanks uh, for that, uh, Neeta. So that controversial order that had been sent out to actually refuse the refugees from Myanmar now stands withdrawn by the government. There has been a relook and a rethink at that. All right, moving on now and uh, talking about Nandir, where a mob of sword wielding Sikhs on Monday attacked policemen, injuring at least four of them after being refused to hold religious procession in the area amidst the coronavirus pandemic. Now, this viral video on your screen right now shows about how the mob actually stormed the Gurudwara, breaking barricades and attacking policemen as well. At least four of them said to be injured at this point. This is what the SP of the area said. Nanded me corona ki bharti hoye patient dekhte hoye lockdown hai. Aapko sab pata hi hai. Isi chiz ko dekhte hoye halla bol ki permission jo hai prashasan ne rudd ki thi. Prashasan reject kiya gaya tha. Aur isme guru dwara board ke sadas guru dwara ke jo pujari hai, Mr. Pujari ji, Baba ji, inke saath hamari baatchit hui thi, meetings hui thi. और उन्होंने काफी सरकार किया था ये तय किया था कि कोरोना की हालत देखते हुए इस बार हल्ला बोल कैंसिल करेंगे पारंपरिक रूप पे ना आते हुए गुरुद्वारा के अंदर ही अंदर मनाएंगे तो चार बजे के करीब ये शुरू होता है लेकिन कुछ यंगस्टर लड़के जो है वो बात नहीं मान रहे थे बाबा जी ने भी उनको समझाने की कोशिश की तो वो एक नंबर गेट से बाहर आ गए और ट्रेडिशनल रूप जो है इसी रूप पे उन्होंने हल्ला बोल मनाया इसमें हमारे रिस्ट्रिक्ट करते वक्त कुछ चार कर्मचारी जख्मी हुए और पुलिस के कुछ व्हीकल से उनका नुकसान हुआ है all right, uh, Sunil Singh, my colleague from NDTV India, joins us on the phone line for more. Uh, Sunil, we can give you some information that what happened to the police and uh, the protesters in their midst of the fight and things are so violent. Look, the fight that the Gurdwara and the Prabhandak and the Guru are very strong. And they were saying that the corona is increasing and the corona is increasing and the corona is increasing. 
स्कूल डिस्ट्रिक्ट लेकिन भीड़ जब चार बजे का समय था जब ये होला मोहल्ला जुलूस निकाला जाता है उस दौरान गुरुद्वारे में भीड़ बहुत बढ़ गई थी और कुछ युवक ऐसे थे तीन सौ चार सौ जो गुरु की भी बात नहीं मान रहे थे और उन्होंने बैरिकेड तोड़ दिया और बैरिकेड तोड़कर वो तलवार लहराते हुए डंडे लहराते हुए बाहर निकल आए उन्होंने पुलिस कर्मियों पर हमला किया और सात पुलिस की गाड़ियाँ भी तोड़ दी चार पुलिसकर्मी उसमें घायल हैं पुलिस ने जब अब मामला दर्ज किया है और जो सीसीटीवी फुटेज मौके से मिले हैं और वीडियो मिले उनके उनके जरिए शिनाख्त कर रही अभी तक 18 लोगों को पहचान कर ली गई है जिन्होंने इस हिंसा में भाग लिया है उनको डिटेन किया गया है और लगभग तीन से से साढ़े तीन सौ लोगों को इस पूरे मामले में इसके खिलाफ मामला दर्ज किया गया है जी सुनील सिंह हमें सारी जानकारी देते हुए बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया दैट वॉज सुनील सिंह गिविंग अस अ लाइफ अपडेट बट लिस्ट लुक एट विजुअल्स वायलेंट रियली एंड द कॉप्स इन द एरिया सिंग एट लीस्ट फोर हैव बीन इंजर्ड With that, we're going to slip into a break. On the other side, good news finally emerging when it comes to the Swiss Canal. It is all clear, but who are the men behind that mammoth task? We'll bring you on the other side. Welcome back. Let's uh, quickly bring you up to speed with the latest uh, figures on COVID in the country. And the last 24 hour figures are now out. A total of 56,211 new cases have been reported in the past one day, and uh, the number of deaths there are over 271. That's uh, pushed up the tally there. Those recovered also about 37,000 at this point.